Welcome to the video tour of Westrock.net. Westrock.net is your online management portal to view the data collected by your Westrock devices and set up and maintain the operation of those devices. To start out, we want to go to the address bar of your browser and type in www.westrock.net and then click enter. Our website is best viewed by using Google Chrome as your browser, but we'll support Internet Explorer version 8.01 or higher and Mozilla Firefox updated in the past six months or so. It also works on mobile devices like your Android or iPhone and uh, Safari browsers for Apple products like uh, MacBooks and iPads. To start out, I'm assuming that you have a username which should be your email address and uh, with your welcome email it should contain a temporary password. So in this case we're going to enter in the email address for my username and then enter in the password which is Westrock all lowercase. The system knows that uh, this is your first time logging in because you're using the temporary password so go ahead and enter in that temporary password which is Westrock and then choose a new password that you'll remember and this way you can choose your own password for our system and we don't have to know what it is makes the system much more secure. After we've uh, successfully changed our password, it, the uh, system takes us to the home screen. From the home screen we have the uh, graphs here that shows us the status of all our devices. It tells us that we have most of our uh, devices in a good status which would be uh, reporting in and above the warning level. We have four devices that are between the warning and critical level and one device that's in the critical state. We have five devices that are not reporting for whatever reason. The not reporting devices could be no sensor, base not reporting, uh, and other things that would cause the, the, uh, the device not to report to the host computer. Sliding on down we have the uh, uh, map view that shows a push pin of all of our monitors that have a good GPS or a good address entered into the system. This kind of allows you to see uh, where you may have some problem sites, where you may need to send a driver and other you know, tank levels in the area. One of the, the features of this uh, tool would be if you have a driver who is quite a ways away from the terminal and has uh, fuel still left on the truck and we'd want them to maybe stop by a site to drop off that fuel instead of hauling it back to the terminal. The main three items that you would use here from the home screen, we've placed buttons on here to, you know, if you want to do something, why not just have a button that says, I want to do this. So in this case, I want to view the readings of my Westrock devices. So I click on view readings. This brings us to the view readings grid view. Uh, a grid view in Westrock, it's similar to uh, how Excel works, but it uh, lists all your devices in, uh, in order that you choose. Right now, I believe they're listed in just a uh, base ID number order. Uh, what you can do if you'd like to see them from lowest to highest would be to click on the column heading for the reading percentage. You click on it once, it resorts your devices into lowest to highest. You click on it again. It would sort your devices from uh, fullest to most empty. You can also sort by alphabetically by location name. This brings your uh, readings in uh, alphabetical order by location. You can sort by serial number, base ID, and any route you may choose. You can enter in uh, a criteria in any of these boxes that would uh, then further filter your results. Uh, let's just say we uh, have a customer named Jeff, but we don't remember Jeff's last name. So you can just enter Jeff in the selection box, click enter, and that would bring up any locations that have Jeff in the location field. From this point, uh, let's just, uh, we're going to go back here. I'm going to remove Jeff from this filter criteria and we're going to say I want to see uh, any of my readings that are below 20 percent so you can use the less than symbol 20 
and this would show us any of our devices that are currently reading in below 20%. In this case we also show any uninstalled cellular devices that are here because they have a record in the system and they show 0% when they're uninstalled. In this case let's take a look at Zigenbine Inc. This brings us to the view details screen. From this screen it shows us what uh, information is commonly been included on an email report. It gives us a color-coded uh, balloon that shows the tank percentage inside of it. It shows the capacity of the tank and the last reported level. Uh, this happened to report in uh, today at uh, 4 after midnight. It gives us the address of the site. It tells us the temperature of the device. This one is a telephone line base unit so it gives us the base unit temperature. It tells us the based on its current daily average usage that this tank will be empty in 15 days. It also shows the last date of uh, the tank was filled. We scroll down a little further here and we're going to see that uh, we do have uh, a custom graph that shows when the tank was filled last. It gives us about the last 30 days worth of uh, reports depending on how often you have the device scheduled to call in. The line is actually color coded to match the status because this tank is uh, below the warning point but above the critical it's yellow. We can click on the signal strength graph that'll give us an idea of the signal strengths that we've had at this site. We ha it does look like we have some spiking but typically the uh, signal strength is in the 40s. We also show the battery uh, life of the device. This helps uh, diagnose any uh, anything that's been in the field for quite some time and you start to see a little bit of battery dip you'll know uh, what's going on with the uh, the life of the battery and when uh, you'd be able to go out and replace it either the battery on a cellular or the uh, transmitter itself for a refurb in this case when the, the battery has reached its end of life the fill graph the fill graph is a uh, it, it actually shows two lines per fill the uh, blue line shows the end of fill level. So the blue lines represent this tank was filled 80% here, 46%, 82%. The red uh, line it represents the fill amount or the percent of the capacity of the tank. Uh, to evaluate how good a job you're doing on filling, you'd see this is a good fill. We've filled 63%. Uh, that's a profitable fill. Down here it looks like sometime in November we probably shouldn't have stopped at this tank because although we filled the tank to 82 percent uh, that was only a 15 percent overall fill so probably not a profitable fill from the view details screen you can see some more of the uh, uh, additional location information fields address here city state zip you can see any of the additional information uh, we have the capacity of tank the scaling if it was set uh, fuel type if it was set and also your custom fields that would be uh, your company specific sort order fields. From this screen we can also view the threshold settings. This is a view only screen. You cannot uh, edit this information but you can see that the tank warning uh, is enabled and it's set at 25 percent. The critical level is enabled and set at 15 percent. It would uh, give us a not reporting alarm uh, after 48 hours of not hearing from the device. Uh, this device would trip a draw rate alarm if it used more than 15 percent in one hour. Uh, the no level change and unplugged alarm are disabled uh, and it shows a threshold of 60 days in that case. Battery low enabled, temperature low. Uh, we're not doing any temperature monitoring here so those are two disabled. This shows the uh, instant email alert screen that shows uh, who the uh, devices are being sent to on the customer side and who an, uh, an instant email alert would be sent to on the corporate side and for which uh, alarms on each alert. This shows us the schedule of the device. Right now it's not calling in on Sunday. It is calling in Monday and Tuesday. Not reporting Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday but also calling in on Saturday. Under the more options screen on a view details this gives us the chance if we'd like to edit some of the information here we can click on the edit uh, this base unit device to change some of the settings also here I'd like to point out one of the, the more common features is the transmitter logs screen so if you click on transmitter logs it gives us the past 30 days by default for this site you can also enter in custom dates here you can go from the first of the year you can type them in by using slashes in between them 
or you can select it from a calendar. Once you've entered in the date ranges you'd like to see, click on filter log. That would refresh the screen and then give us a graph of the, the time and date from the first of the year up until the uh, first of November. If you scroll down you'll see all the tank readings available in a tab down here if you'd like to just view it on the screen. But uh, one of the more uh, common features here in, in or I'm sorry, one of the more popular features here in Westrock.net is the ability to export from the grid view. Anytime you see the little XLS icon or CSV icon, by clicking on that icon, it downloads a, an export of whatever data is present on the screen at the time. So in this case, we downloaded the tank log for this tank from the first of the year till the uh, first of April. And this is a file that you could generate and then email to your customer. This is a file you could generate and then email to your customer if there was a billing dispute or they may uh, want to know uh, what their usage was. Now, from any screen in westrock.net, if you'd like to go back to the home screen, all you need to do is click on Westrock in the upper left-hand corner, and that would take us back to the home screen where we can enter view readings, enter a new CTM, or manage any of the other devices if they may be a telephone line or satellite device. We're going to go back to view readings and we're going to talk a little bit about saving a filter that you may use constantly. Uh, you might want to view your bulk tanks every day. You might want to uh, view a specific set of tanks and by entering a criteria that would tell us, uh, let's just say uh, I want to see an example would be, I want to see any of my bulk tank locations. So uh, you would enter a filter that would uh, select those tanks. In this case, we're just going to use a uh, name it contains bulk. And then you notice once you apply a filter, this uh, save report, save this report button pops up. All you have to do is give this report a name. the system tells you is saved successfully. Once the screen's refreshed we can go up here to the bulk tank or I'm sorry to the reports menu and then go down and select my save report and it refreshes the data without you having to retype in a filter criteria every time. Now in this case this is just a single uh, location filter but as we get more advanced in filtering and have multiple criteria that match that it would save you uh, a time every day with having to rebuild that filter when all you now you have to do is go to one site and do one click and it'll pull up the freshest data that the system has that matches that criteria you set previously. From the view readings grid view, we wanted to point out that you also can export a data set by using the, the export function here as well. It's, it's very simple. It's just uh, click on the XLS button if you'd like an Excel file export. We know the system is working because down on the bottom row you saw waiting for westrock.net and you'll see that the uh, system automatically downloads a f uh, a, an Excel file data set to the location where your uh, browser is set up to download that file to. Typically in the downloads folder it could be your, to your desktop. If you have questions about that you can call tech support and we can help you find the file.